In this video with the On King, I'm going to talk about the importance of medical school grades. Now this includes the board exams like step one and step two, but also your clerkship grades, even your preclinical grades, and then the things that factor into that like AOA. And I'm gonna go into a little more detail on each of those. Uh, now, we have lots of social media channels. Uh, we also have this YouTube if you want to subscribe here, which we would love and appreciate that. Uh, we also have a link here for if you need help or tutoring or a Patreon for individualized support as you're going through this process. I have a couple other helpful videos, including how I scored 260 plus on step one and also on step two. These videos are much longer than this will be. They go into very uh, specific detail on exactly what I did to study on a day by day basis and also how I incorporated Anki and practice questions and everything else in. So I will put the link to these videos in the description so that you can go and find them easily. I would definitely recommend watching both of these videos in addition to this one. So how important are your clinical and preclinical grades really? And how much does step one, step two, that kind of stuff factor into you actually getting residency positions? Um, well, like I said before, in a lot of these videos in the playlist, I applied to dermatology. However, I did gather quite a bit of information in talking to lots of people throughout the specialties. And I think there are some definite themes uh, that, that play into this and how residency di program directors are looking at your grades. Um, so I'm going to go through those and I'm going to start with what I think is the most important and end with what I think is the least important. Uh, so definitely focus on the ones that are the most important. Number one, I think, is your clinical grades and the remarks that they make on those, the comments that they leave. Uh, so, and, and I know that this is subjective and definitely not what you want to hear, uh, but with step one going past fail, it definitely is putting more weight on things like this. But also what they're looking at is not like, are you the brightest person in the world? If you're looking at somebody that you have to work with on a daily basis, you're not gonna pick the smartest person necessarily. You definitely want someone that's smart and does well, uh, but you want somebody that you enjoy working with. So they're going to look at these comments and the remarks as like, what's your personality like? Am I going to enjoy working with you? Is this kind of person going to fit with our residency program and the personalities that are here? Uh, it's definitely something that they're going to consider. So this is really important and I would definitely stress that you really focus on this. I have an entire video playlist and I'll link it in the description of this video on how to honor each one of your rotations. Uh, there's some little things that I think make a pretty big difference. Uh, for example, when you're presenting, just mentioning the fact that you talked with the family last afternoon or that you looked up something as research, that can really help. Um, so little tips like that I put in that whole playlist and I would definitely focus on that and make sure you do well in this section because it's going to be increasingly important and it already was probably the highlight um, when I was applying my year. The next thing on the important list I would say for grades is your step two score. And the reason is because step one is now going pass fail. And so step two is going to be very, very important. Uh, now with all of this, I'm going to get to this in a, a minute, but your preclinical grades and your step one are a very, very important and strong foundation for how well you're going to do on your shelf exams and step two. Uh, so like I said, just barely number one is your clinical grades. Your shelf exams are going to factor into that and step two as well. So I think that, you know, making sure you get the foundation is very important, but your actual step two score is going to be uh, really important for screening purposes and stuff, especially if you're going for competitive specialties. Uh, if you're going for a competitive specialty, you need to know what score you roughly need to be in. Make sure your practice tests are around that area and practice. Study hard uh, because it is, it, it, it's not going to get you accepted to a residency program or highly ranked, but it is going to open the door for an interview. So it is a necessary step. Okay, my number three is step one. And I know that it's past fail now, but I'm still gonna leave this as more important than the ones I'm gonna talk about here in a minute. And the reason is because getting a very, very good step one knowledge is absolutely key to doing well on step two and doing well on all your shelf exams, but also just performing well in the hospital, knowing the side effects of antibiotics, knowing your differentials well, things like that is gonna score you points in the subjective realm uh, when you have your clinical grades. So having a very strong step one foundation is really, really important. And even though it is pass fail, I would strongly advise you do not neglect this because it is a, a key and an important piece <laughs> of the rest of your career. The next thing on the list I would say is preclinical grades. This is really hard for me to like truly evaluate because all of my preclinical grades were um, basically all pass fail. We knew who the top piece was because they got AOA, but otherwise it was all pass fail. However, I list this in here because I think doing really well in your classes, doing well for step one, things like that, is, like, again, is a very strong foundation for everything moving forward. But if you have preclinical grades, I don't think they're gonna get looked at nearly as much as the clinical grades because like I said, they're not looking at how smart you are, they're looking at how much do I wanna work with this individual. 
The last thing on the important list is things like AOA, AOA and um, the GHHS, the Humanism Society. And they're, they're nice, but it really just checks a box. It's not going to win you any battles. It's not necessarily going to get you an interview. Um, it's just, it's nice. It's like a cherry on top. Um, and so if, if it means that you have to study like an extra 12 hours for each quiz in order to get AOA, it's probably not worth it. But if it means you've got to study an extra hour, it's probably going to be worth it. It is nice. People will notice it. There are certain programs that definitely put weight on it. Those things are changing in the near future. Uh, the requirements to get it, uh, the humanism one a lot of times is kind of like a, uh, it, it's basically just a, 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 all of your peers are voting on who it's going to be. So it's a popularity contest, right? Um, people don't want to say that, but in a lot of aspects, it, it really is because I, I think most people that go into medicine deserve it. Some, some sort of humanism award. That's really all I have for the importance of grades uh, as you go through things. Definitely focus on getting a very strong foundation during your first two years, whether it's graded or not, whether step one is graded or not, uh, because as you get into the third year, your step two and your, sh and your clinical exams are really important. Um, and go and watch the playlist I have on all of those rotations and how to honor those, uh, and hopefully that will be helpful for you. Thanks for learning with The On King. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel here as well as follow us on Facebook, Instagram, or Patreon. That is at OnKingMed. Also feel free to reach out via email or check out our website, OnKingMed.com, for more tips and tricks.